Gia hype train and reach the elite division, the elite top of this division, and perhaps become a world champion in his own right. Will it be the fight of the year? We hope so. Here we go. 12 rounds. Anaheim, California. Mugia and Lozano. Mugia back down to 160 after fighting at 168 in his last three bouts. He looks like he's holding the weight pretty well. I was about to say, both these fighters are really big middleweights. Gabriel Rosado coming from 154, but about six foot wide back, muscular. But Mugia looks a little bit bigger in there still. You know, one thing to watch early is going to be the activity of Gabe Rosado. And he is a very active fighter, stop, throwing about stop. 70 punches per round as a middleweight, whereas Rosado, in recent fights, has been more judicious with his punches. If he's going to try to win a decision, he's got to match the output of Jaime Munguia. And as you mentioned earlier, Chris, Jaime Munguia's best defense is offense. How will he handle someone like Rosado, who's so crafty, who can score punches? If Rosado starts backing up Munguia, that, you can tell that's going to be success there. But Munguia doesn't fight as good on the back foot like he does on the front foot. You know, I think a key for these early rounds for Rosado in many ways is going to be survival. I mean, Munguia is a fast starter. He's the younger fighter. Whereas Rosado, he's shown some resilience later in fights. Against Maciek Suletsky, he knocked him down in the later rounds. Against Peter Quillen, he had more success in the later round. So, Rosado wants to take this fighter in Munguia into deeper waters. Munguia looking really sharp. More heavy foot feints, his jab popping up nicely. You know, real fluid with his combinations right now. And I like how he's jabbing Rosado to the gut, too. You don't see that too often from, from the, the guitar of Munguia. Nice uppercut there from Munguia, which grazed the head of Rosado. Munguia currently on a four-fight knockout streak. Only three of his last 14 fights have gone the distance. Yeah, and he's ended fights in different ways. It's Toriano Johnson. That fight was stopped after he threw an uppercut that literally split the lip of Johnson. Munguia having a lot of success, success stabbing Rosado in the midsection, bringing them elbows down. And we all know Rosado gets cut easily, Sergio. Well, you know, he hasn't been cut in a while, but he reddens up easily. You know, he has that scar tissue there. A lot of miles, a lot of miles in the, uh, the, the face and the wear and tear of Gabriel Rosado. But that's what a warrior, the warrior in him. Scheduled for 12. Mugia telling us if Rosado stands in the middle of the ring and trades with me, it'll be a short night. Good upper body movement by Jaime Mugia, which is what he lacked defensively. But I'm, I really like the way he's keeping his elbows in and the upper body perpetually moving, sticking behind that jab. That looked like a clash of heads. And Mugia got the worst of it. He's trying to blink the left eye. <laughs> You know, a little too much head hunting from Gabe Rosado early on. They talked all week about the need to soften up the body of Jaime Munguia, to slow him down. And so far, it's Munguia throwing the lion's share of the body shots. Yeah, it was Freddie Roach who was saying, I'm not impressed with Munguia's body at all as he unleashes a flurry there. And Munguia concentrating on speed. I love seeing that. I've seen a little bit of that with Spiker Sullivan. I want to see a lot more of that. Don't load up on the shots. Don't smother yourself if you're Munguia. Yeah, time 
perfectly by Rosado as Munguia was lunging in. And that's the kind of counter shot that Gabe's going to need to land all night long. So Munguia comes charging in and starts throwing punches in volume. Gabe's going to land those sharp shots. Munguia currently ranked as the number one contender for Demetrius Andrade's WBO belt, as well as being the number one contender for Jamal Charlo in the WBC championships. He can fight whoever he wants to, Chris. Sorry, I have a bit of a panic attack when I hear Charlo and Andre in the same sentence. <laughs> Andre will be fighting next week right here on the zone. But right now, a good one heating up. Munguia doing the right thing, not letting, not letting Rosado control the tempo of the fight. The first half of that, that second round, Rosado was doing well with that jab. Munguia coming out the combination, putting the pressure. Don't let the older fighter fight at his pace. Good body shot for Gabe Rosado. Stop, stop, stop. said, of course, after training Pacquiao and beating him twice, I already did. <laughs> Maybe he meant this weekend. I'm sure he did. Sergio, does this fight look the way you thought it would? The way I expected and I hoped that Rosado was going to come out. Yes, it did. And Munguia doing the right thing. Look, Munguia is, is applying the pressure, but Rosado's not, he's not falling for the bait of falling into war. Not yet. You know, he wants to get out of these early rounds, and I think it was always doing just that. Well, you heard Freddie say it between rounds. you got to go to the body more. And that, again, is a big part of the pre-fight strategy to start tapping Munguia to that body. So far, it's almost exclusively headshots. Stop, 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 and a better round here by Rosado now. The Jazz are landing. He's letting his hand go a little bit more. And there's Eric Ross, bottom left of your screen. Hall of Famer. Look, he's done a nice job with Munguia over these last four-plus fights. I think he's, he's improved his offense. The uppercut is really coming along. And that jab has become a more effective weapon over the last few fights. Couple mm -hmm. good one twos there from Rosado. Well, Rosado's doing the right thing by not, not letting Munguia break the distance and keeping him at the end of the jab. Left hook for Munguia. Rosado better start dipping to his left. He's, he's, he's dipping to his right. You saw Rosado's face right there. That was a very similar movement that Munguia made that, that the bully did in the last fight where he dipped in and Rosado just missed with that counter shot. Freddie Roach. Stop! Nobody punched. Yeah, he's really instilled a lot of confidence in Gabe Rosado over the last couple of years. Really reinvigorated his career. And amazingly, a oh, nice shot there from Munguia. Rosado answers for the jab. Munguia a 10 to 1 favorite in Las Vegas. It's a short right hand by Munguia. Didn't load up, just, like, just unleashed it at the right time. And those are the little differences that I've been seeing in Munguia. That's up for cut. Stick and move by Rosado, but he just got stuck.
Rosado planting his feet, not backing up as easily anymore. He's staying on the inside. I think he wants to get some respect out of this round. Both men utilizing their jabs. But notice how Rosado's not backing up anymore. He's standing flat-footed. Trying to get some leverage into a, an overhand punch. And there it is right there. Left hook around the guard of Munguia. A very uh, even great, fight, it seems, great. for the first three rounds as we look at Chris Maddox's scorecard. Yeah, I've got a three rounds to none in favor of Jaime Munguia. But Rosado did some better things in that third round. But Munguia, he's putting together the combinations much better. And Rosado just simply isn't landing the impact shots he needs to land. Yep, I agree, it's 3-0, but I think uh, Rosado's laying the, the foundation to, to do something later on in the fight. I don't disagree, Sergio. In fact, I think Rosado's fight is really in the final two-thirds of this fight. He needs to get Mugia tired. He's hit that right hand, continuing to score. Mugia looking at the referee for, for help. He's not getting it. Remember, there's a big experience edge for Gabe Rosado here. He has been in deep waters with some really good fighters. Let the war begin, guys, because Rosado is going to Tripling up on them. If you got a free hand throw, that's what Rosado was doing. And he does it again. Right here. Jack Reese said he's hitting him in the face. This crowd is definitely big right hand for Rosado. It's almost like you can see a switch flip. And Gabe Rosado, where he decided it's time to make this fight a win. Because that's the difference between a guy that's here to win and a guy that's here to survive. Rosado's here to win tonight. Why wouldn't he be? seconds of that round. You saw in some of those replays, some of those flinches, he did a decent job of tying up, avoiding a clean shot. Whereas in that final 30 seconds, I thought he made some good combinations. But I do think Gabe changed the momentum of this fight a little bit in that last round. Stop putting him on the side. Mugia continues to look at the referee for help, Sergio. You noticing that? I do notice that. And, and there's a little... I don't want to say discouraged, but there's a little look in his face like of uh, a concern, I, will, I want to say. And there's more confidence in the face of Rosado, even though Munguia's winning. Maybe it's the young, old bull factor, the fact that Munguia's, you know, respecting Rosado a little bit too much, but Munguia's doing exactly what he needs to do. Moving that upper body and taking it away when he gets close and breaks that distance. For Rosado, right hand, left hand. Beautiful combination by Rosado and not staying in front of Munguia afterwards. He gets the job, the puncher, and then pivots away.
10, 11, and 12 are going to look like. It's hard to say. Gabe Rosado has been there before. He's having to be his experience in those types of fights are limited. Rosado, as much as he's improved the last round and a half, about two rounds, and he is still the far more active puncher. So Chris may have it a shutout for Mugia so far, but it still feels like a very close fight. Stop. Nobody points. Nobody points. Why not? Mugia has stopped 24 of his last 28 opponents. Nice combo there. And when he has shown the ability in recent fights. Oh, big right hand for Rosado. Best punch of the fight, perhaps. Stop. Separate. You don't see a lot of emotion in the face of Jaime Munguia. You can't really tell how he's feeling in there. That was a really strong fight, though. Oh, nice left touch. And he's back. Rosado up. Yeah, it's not, benef it's not benefiting Gabe Rosado to be blocking the shots with that near enough defense. But Munguia's a strong puncher punching through the gloves of Rosado. A lot of activity for Munguia, though, Chris. Can he keep this pace up? Well, he's shown he can. Uh, right, at great. least in recent fights, right. averaging about 70 punches per round as a middleweight. And Gabe's had a couple of good moments in this round, but Munguia has just overwhelmed him with volume. And that's the kind of stuff the judges are going to look for. Rosado telling us yesterday, I'm always looking to set tracks. And you can see it. I mean, look at the eyes of Rosado. He's, he's thinking the entire time in there, what counter can I land in this youngster? Just like that. Tried that left hook right there. But Munguia's doing a good job keeping that hand up every time he's letting the other go. Good technique on Munguia's part. Just been in complete control. One 
question I have is coming into this play. Gabe Rosado sparred with David Benavidez coming into it. And he sparred between 80 and 100 rounds with Benavidez. On the surface, Sergio, I would say, great, good sparring. But does Gabe Rosado, at 35 years old, need to be going 80 plus rounds with a young stud like David Benavidez? That felt to me maybe a little bit too much for a fighter at this stage of his career. Yes, it sounds like too much. And anytime you're, you're dealing with a fighter like Gabe Rosado, he knows how to fight already. You don't need to train harder, you train smarter. But there is confidence being gained there. And whenever you have a legend and you're throwing like Freddie Rose saying it's all right to continue fighting and, and doing 100 rounds and Benavidez, and you just got to follow your gut and follow what Roach is doing. Oh, Freddie Roach also said he could stop to those stop. sparring oh, sessions oh, towards the end because they were becoming wars. I'm not so sure Gabe Rosado needs wars in sparring sessions. Now we're going to find out if the wear and tear is there because this is when it starts happening in the 7th and 8th round. Right for Gabe Rosado on the inside. And this is what I want to see from Rosado in the second half of the fight. Backing up Mugir. Mugir doesn't fight as good on the back foot, but he doesn't think it. And Rosado doing an excellent job backing up Mugir here in this round. for a big right hand it looks. Gay Rosado talking some smack on the inside and with an uppercut. energy they're giving him. And Chris, are you getting the sense that Rosado is content not to try and win by decision at this point? He's going for a knockout or a stoppage. Well, look, I think he came in wanting to win any way possible. But the volume punching in Gia has effectively, at this stage of the fight, taken it off the table. So he's got to find a way to time Mungia coming in and land a big shot. Mungia doing a good job of not letting himself get time because he's concentrating on speed and, and maintaining. He's not, he's not breaking that distance as he used to. So I can see the influence and the effect of Eric Morales already. No, you're right, Sergio. He really only had one moment, and that was in the third round, when he leaned in kind of recklessly, and Rosado just missed it. Since then, he has been very savvy in there in the ring, and my scorecard reflects that. Six rounds to one in favor of Jaime Mungia. And those are vicious, brutal, brutal uh, body shots by Mungia. You can tell what type of shape Gabriel Rosado in, because those shots are heavy shot being landed. But I will say this, Rosado, known for getting knocked down and coming back up and getting into fights, has stood his ground all night. Really hasn't been wobbled to the point where you think he might go down. And Mungia knocks almost everybody down. Has stopped 24 of his last 28 opponents. Has an 81% knockout ratio. Left hook there from Rosado. Both of them exchanging left hooks right there and landing. Nobody punch. Nobody punch. I'm really impressed with him here. Oh, big left from Rosado. Why did you have to praise him so much? Yeah. Mugia rolled with that shot, I'm telling you. You don't know that's clean as you shot, I'm telling you. And you that's a clean shot right there. And you get hit. Got him again with a jab. Again, you can't tell from the facial expressions of Mugia when he's hurt and when he's not. I think that right hand finally hit Mungia. Stop. Nobody punch. Nobody punch. Don't push him to take advantage. Left hook. 
lunging left hook oh, from Lozada, who's now starting perhaps. in that final stage, Rosado has got to do something big to change the course of this fight. Munguia is racking up rounds, but you can see the fatigue on him. Whereas Rosado, he's been comfortable in this type of situation before. But Sergio, you know Rosado, he doesn't think he's ever lost a fight in his life. Do you think he realizes he's down this much on the cards? I don't think he looks at that. I think he, he just looks at the fact that he's still in the fight and he sees that the traps are getting closer and closer to work. And so anytime you're dealing with a, a gladiator like this, that one punch away, he's always going to have confidence. Even in, in his biggest losses, you know, where he was cut up and bloody and being battled around, he was still eager to fight. I'm just thinking, is he, is, is he feeling, hey, I can win this on the scorecards. I don't have to go all out for the KO. Stop, 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 stop. He can't possibly be thinking that. I don't think he's thinking that, no. I think he's setting up for something big, at least for a knockdown to even things out. And people stop. watching might look at Rosado's record and say, look, he's not a big puncher. How is he going to score the knockout? And you're right. He's not a one-punch type of guy. Traditionally, but he is a big counter puncher. We saw that against Melakuziev. Sir, did you talk about your sparring experience with Rosado? Good action here from Mozilla. Comes to life, eats a jab. Yeah, where well, Rosado lacks some power, he makes up with some timing. The timing can hurt you, man. What's up? I break the back. Wearing tear starting to show in Rosado's face. <laughs> Forty five seconds left here in round nine. Chopping that hand by Rosado has Mugia going backwards now. Yeah, that first right hand looked like it caught Mugia on the temple. Stop, right and we know oh, the oh, impact oh, of those kind of shots. Mark, it's with a microphone. A Great call by Jack Reese. Mugia 
is still landing some shots, but Rosado has become the pressure fighter and the bully in this round. Yes, he has. And any time you get a unleashes, like you're doing right there, oh, Rosado comes right back before he does that. Wow. Smothers the attack. There's Bernard Hopkins, one of the all-time greats. Part of Golden Boy, of course. Mujia's output continues to be high. Right there, oh, nice counter right there from Mujia. Mujia started this round really fast. Mujia started it. Oh, 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 oh. And Mujia might be hurt. Freddie Roach telling Rosado, we need to win this round big. He's not doing that. Stop, nobody punch. Step back. Stop it, Bell. Oh, big step in right hand for Rosado. Catches him again. Two of those in that round, but Mugia took them well. And you see Sergio just a split second late for Rosado to follow up on that. Landed that chopping right hand, and there was a pause. If he lands that shot, he has got to hunt him down. 250 landed punches by Munguia, the most ever landed on Rosado in his career. Sinisa Estrada, what do you see? Forgot about the body, looking for that overhand right. Mugia caught on to that. Sinisa Estrada, what do you see? Punching is just very effective and pushing Rosado back. Rosado's doing a great job when he comes forward and pushes Mugia back. But so far, it's not lasting uh, too long as far as Rosado pushing Mugia back. Mugia's coming back with combinations and throws three, four, five punches at one time. And now Mugia again on the front foot. Rosado's starting to bleed.
Chris, how do you have it? Well, I've got him uh, up significantly. 108 to 101. He has just been in control, throwing far more punches. As you know, that last round, Bob, landing stop, stop, more stop, punches stop. on Gabe Rosado than any opponent in his career. So Gabe is going to need a knockout to win this fight. Well, Jaime Munguia is not only throwing a lot of punches, but he's landing at a high percentage. And usually, for a fighter like Rosado to try to catch him in between the shots, he, he needs Munguia to slow down. Munguia is not slowing down, not giving him that opportunity. Munguia wants a knockout. Sergio, you brought this up earlier, but those Munguia shots are just going right through the guard of Gabe Rosano. These are some hard shots from the jabs to the counters. Everything he's throwing is with bad intentions. And the right hands are landing cleanly on Rosado now. His face is battered and bruised. The most shots he's ever taken. I mean, this is probably, you know, this is the last hurrah for Gabe Rosado, but what a warrior. I mean, I'm humbled stop, watching stop, him. Stop, stop, stop. Little one holding. Well, you can never count Gabe Rosado out of any fight. And there's still a minute 40 to go. And he's, he's still <laughs> trying. Of course. Remember the home run right there in the right hand. Of course. But like I said, Munguia's already caught on to that right hand. It, Rosado totally forgot about the body, and that was part of the game plan, I believe. He, he, he had success backing up Munguia, but he just forgot about the body shots and forgot about the jab. Well, he has taken some big shots from Rosado, but he hasn't done, has given Rosado a chance to land those big counters. That's what Gabe is looking for throughout this fight. He has not been there up until this point. And not for nothing, Munguia, even though he looked tired, the, the, the technique is still there. Rosado can't catch the left hook because the technique is still there for Munguia as well. And Chris, there's always been questions about Munguia. Had they just match made him right up through the lucky? Is he really as good as people think he is? What say you? Any questions about Munguia given how often he gets hit? But this is the most experienced opponent that he has faced in his career. Gabe Rosado has fought at a world-class level. Jaime Munguia is giving him a pretty good beating. Eric Morales has been the difference in this, this new side of Jaime Munguia. It's a slight tweaks. He hasn't become, become anything. Oh, oh, it's, not right. it's not over yet. And just like in that Magic Selecki fight, I mean, it, it, it came down to the wire where Gabe Rosado almost had him out in the last round. They wanted a war. They gave us a war here in Anaheim. What a fight. Jaime Munguia and Gabe Rosado. About 117, 111, and still the reigning WBO Intercontinental Middleweight Champion, El Orgullo de Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, El Invicto, Jaime.